guys, it's Landon Blake from Recline Horizons. This is the second video I'm doing today that, that kind of gets into some more of the nuanced uh, elements of boundary surveying. I'm doing these videos for my friends, Danny, Kano, Hunter Stetson, Mike Dorsey, you guys know who you are. I hope this helps you. Um, so as I mentioned in the other video at the beginning, uh, this is not what I would call an entry level boundary surveying video. So it's a little more nuanced and I don't want to, I don't want to confuse newbies. Um, you guys are welcome to watch this video, but it is, it, it's made for some people that have had some time, uh, with some, with, with boundary surveying. So what I want to talk about in this video is understanding when you have a good fit between measured and record based on historical survey methods and circumstances. This is something that a lot of surveyors don't understand, um, especially construction surveyors. And so I want to explain it because I'm, I want to teach you guys how to be good boundary surveyors. So I was out on a job actually yesterday and uh, there was a civil engineer there and we were, we were both on site and we were, some, the civil engineer was setting some property corners and I mentioned to him that I, I was happy because on this particular survey we had tied in their corners and I found them within about a foot of where I expected to find them. And he said, a foot? He said, that's horrible. Why are you, why are you happy with a foot? And I told him, I said, well, you know, this is a really old survey. You know, survey was done a hundred years ago, more than a hundred years ago. And, uh, you know, the, the, I don't even know how well the, the, the parcels on the old map closed. And so, yeah, I was pretty happy with a foot. And, um, he was, he was surprised by that. Why was he surprised? He, well, he's not a boundary surveyor. <laughs> I mean, he was out there setting corners. But he didn't under, he didn't understand. He didn't understand historical survey methods and circumstances. In that case, on that particular survey, I was super happy with the foot. I'd have been happy with four or five feet probably. Um, and the fact that his resolution of those corner positions matched mine within a foot, you know, I was pleased with that. Um, so a lot of people don't understand this. A lot of surveyors and a lot of civil engineers. So I want to try and explain it. So let's do a couple definitions first. What is a measured bearing distance when, when we say measured, a measured value? A measured value is uh, something that you have measured on your current survey, and in my opinion, it requires a monument on each side of the line or something physical on each side of the line. So a lot of surveyors will show measured values on their survey when they really mean calculated. To me, if it's measured, that means you had to have measured something in the field. If you didn't have something you could physically measure between then it's a value you calculated. It's not a value you measure. Okay. So what is a, when I say a record bearing in distance, a record value, because we're talking about how record values fit with measured. If we talk about a record value, that's just a value that comes from another survey, typically a, a historical survey, a survey that was done prior to you. Usually it's done by another surveyor. Now, sometimes you might be retracing your own work and then you're going to be the one that did the record. But in most cases, we're talking about measurements made by another surveyor. So, why does this fit between measured, your measurements, and the record measurements, the historical measurements matter? Okay, I'm going to give you three reasons why it matters as for, for you as a boundary surveyor. Number one, we need to know how historical measurements fit with, fit with physical evidence that's available today. That's a really important part of boundary resolution, and it doesn't always fit. Sometimes you go out, you locate the, the physical evidence, you know, the, the corner monuments, the walls, the fences, the rock piles, the creeks, whatever it is. And you compare that to the, the measurements of record and it doesn't fit. What do you do? Sometimes you have to do something about that. You know, you got to prorate or adjust or scale. Sometimes you don't do anything about it. Sometimes you hold the physical evidence. Um, so you need to know as a boundary surveyor, what do you do when stuff doesn't fit? It doesn't fit a lot. So you need to know what to do. We don't always teach that. So I'm going to try and teach you guys some of that. And then the second reason is historical measurements. Uh, they may need to be adjusted in some ways before you use them to establish a corner position. So sometimes we will hold a record distance or a record angle or bearing to reestablish a corner. We don't like to do that, but because we lack evidence, sometimes we have to do that. Well, sometimes you need to scale or, or rotate or change that bearing or distance or angle before you hold it. So as an example, in downtown Stockton, the, when the guy laid out our blocks, he had a long chain. So the record says 600, but I think there's 606 feet, our blocks. Well, if you're going to hold a, a distance to establish a block corner, you better apply that scale factor, the difference between 600 and 606, um, or you're going, to, you're going to put it in the wrong spot. So you need to know that. 
The third reason is historical measurements don't always fit together even within themselves. So you can have two historical surveys, they don't fit. And then sometimes the, the historical surveys don't fit with the measurements, so nothing fits. So what do you do when you have historical measurements that don't fit together? So surveyors need to understand the fit between measured and records is really important. It's a key part of the boundary resolution process. So why, when you're going to look at the fit between measured and record, why does historical why do historical survey methods and the circumstances of the survey matter? Okay, so I'm going to give you some kind of rules of thumb. Rule of thumb number one, you can't measure as good as you think you can. Uh, a lot of times I will see surveyors that will do something like this. Write it on the board. They'll have two monuments that they've measured in between. And it's supposed to be 100 foot even. So they'll say 100 foot even like that record. And then they come down here and they say something like this, 100.02 measured. So they're saying, this guy was 200s off. I just saw that on a map in Oakdale huh. about a month ago. You can't measure that good. I don't care who you are. You think you can measure that good, but if you're doing a boundary survey of any significant size, you can't measure lines within 200s. You've got that in your setup error. Um, so this is silly. He should have just showed 100 feet. He matched the record, especially if the old map showed this to the nearest foot, you know, then this guy's being a little ridiculous. So that's rule of thumb number one. When you're comparing measure to record, remember, you can't measure as good as you think you can. Just because your total station reports the distance to the nearest thousandth of a foot doesn't mean you can measure that good. So think about that. Guys are always creating differences between measure and record when they don't really exist. That's because they love math and they don't understand precision and accuracy. Okay. The other thing was rule of thumb number two, depending on the time frame, a measurement to the nearest foot or to the nearest tens of feet was, was that was excellent, man. That was, you know, you, in the old days, you're dragging a transit and a chain and you come around that block and you close within a foot. You're good. Like go get a cold beer, right? That was a, that was a reason to celebrate. Even in the public land survey system, if you read the errors of closure that were allowed in the old survey manuals, it, it wasn't hundreds spokes or tenths. It was feet. It was many, it was tens of feet. So if you find an old, an old measurement and it doesn't fit based on your modern equipment, don't have a heart attack. It fit, there's a very good chance it fit with the quality of the instrument um, and the survey methods that they were using at the time. So you need to know some, a little something about the time of the survey. Now, I'm not saying you don't ever find blunders or mistakes. You do. And sometimes that needs to be fixed. Sometimes you have really just crummy surveys. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. What I'm saying is the majority of the time, those older surveys close just fine considering the historical survey methods and we just are being silly. Retracing surveyors are being silly. Um, the third rule of thumb I want you to remember when you're looking at measured versus record is uh, it was hard to survey in the mountains and the forest. It's it's still hard. Um, it's still hard to go get a good good survey up in the mountains, the uh, terrain. So you got to think about this is the circumstances. You got to think about terrain. You know, was a guy out there in a covered wagon uh, worried about getting ate by a bear? Um, you know, was it 105 degrees and they didn't have air conditioning, so they set the they set the monument in the shade instead of in the sun? You got to think about it. this is important. Bob's doing a survey in the Carson Valley up against the Sierra Nevadas, and this old GLO surveyor, I was. 2,000 foot up, you know, a two to one slope, he set this corner. And he went another mile back up into the mountains. It was, I couldn't believe it. It was unbelievable that he drug a chain up into those mountains. It blew my mind. It's like, look, if I, got, I, I never did. I didn't have to go up and look for that next corner. But let's say I got a half a mile or a mile in there and I found his corner and he was off 100 feet. Give the man a gold medal. It was amazing what he surveyed in considering the, the technology that he had at the time. Okay, and then the last rule of thumb is if you don't understand the precision and accuracy of old measurements, you're going to create problems where they don't exist. Don't do that. Don't call that guy out because he didn't hit it within a thousandth of your measurement, right? That That's silly. So the other thing you want to do is you want to explain on your retracement survey, you want to explain how your measurements fit record, okay? So if you're within the error bubble, if you're within two hundredths of record, hold record. You're going to say, I found the record. Don't put a difference in here when there doesn't need to be one. 
you can't measure that good. So what the, my rule of thumb is if, if that record measurement is within your error bubble, and I tell most surveyors, boundary surveyors, you know, they're surveying on the end, you gotta pretend like on the end of the, the end of the rod is a ping pong ball or a tennis ball, somewhere between those two, two sizes. That's your error bubble. So if you find the record measurement within that error bubble, you're good. Report record. Okay? Some surveyors will agree with me, disagree with me, but that's what I think you should do. Now, if you find that measurement outside a record, then you might report that difference, and that's okay. Um, but you should explain on your map when when you hold record, when you fit record, when you don't fit record. Okay? And I want to give you an example. This gets a little complicated, so I want to just give you an example we can talk about. All right? So let's say we do a survey of a rectangular lot here, and it's 200 feet by 500 feet. Okay, distances are shown to the nearest foot on the old map. Okay, and you find these monuments. So records in, I'll put record in uh, brown. Okay. Oh, sorry, got that backwards because I'm dyslexic. Okay, so those are our record measurements. And then I'll put in green, I'll put our found measurements. Okay, our modern measurements. So up here we find 200.02, .02, and we find 500.01. Okay, so now we got to restore this corner down here. We'll call it corner A. What distance are you going to use to set this corner? You're going to come down here and go 200.02 feet? I think that's silly. Right? This is silly. You come 200 feet and set that corner. Because you found 200. You're, you're, you're not this good. You found 200. Just come down 200 and set it. Okay? Now, let's change this a little bit. Let's make this a little more tough, a little more difficult. So let's say, now, you found 202 and 505. Now you got to put in corner A. What do you use down here for this distance? Or we could be coming down. Let's just keep it simple. Come in from this side. What are we going to use here? Do we use 200? Or do we use 202? Now, in this case, because I can see that there's maybe there was a, a, a scaling, a scaler here that can be applied, right? Maybe this guy had a long chain. I'd probably use 202 to put that back in, back this corner back in. Now, there's a lot of other things I would look at. I would look at how do these other record distances on these other parcels, how do they compare? Um, I would want to know, is there physical occupation here? Well, where is that occupation at? How does it fit the 202? Okay, I would want to know if I came out here 202, this record angle, what does that make this 500, right? So if I, if I turn this record angle and come down this distance, 202, what is that line? Is it five, pretty close to 505, right? Or if I, if I forget, uh, maybe I don't turn the record angle here, maybe I hold this bearing between these two monuments and come down and hold 202, how does it fit? Does it, does it, how does that 500? How does this distance calculate? Is it close to 505? Then I'd ask myself, if I hold 200, does it fit occupation better? Right? It's, you gotta look at that. Come up with a solution that's reasonable, document it on your map, and be able to defend it. Okay? In this case, the almost certainly the right answer is gonna be 202, not 200. Because we know there's a scale. Now, let's make this a little more tricky. Let's say you find 202 up here on the 200 foot line. So records 200, you find 202. But over here on the 500 foot line, you find 501. Now what do you do to put in A? Do you come over 202? Do you come over 200? Or do you come down 500? Man, that's tricky. I'd have to think about that. I'd have to, you know, I'd have to really do some digging here. Right? Because now we don't have a clean scaler that we can apply. Maybe this was a bust when they said this corner was a bust. Now, if that's an original monument, it still controls. Maybe you got to come over here 200, and this line gets kinked. I don't know. If I had an old fence that would did that, that's what I would probably do. Okay? Or maybe if I had the fence over here, I'd hold 202 down here, even though this is 500. 
right? Or maybe I got another, I've got a found monument over here and I got another record measurement. And if I make this 202, this measurement fits good. Well, then I might hold 202. But if this measurement fits good with 200, then maybe I hold 200. You got to look at all the circumstances here, right? And you can't just look at your parcel. You got to look at this matrix around your parcel. I got another video that talks about the resolve boundary matrix. This is why understanding the fit between measure and record is so important for good boundary surveyors, right? So learn about it, understand it, apply it when you're doing boundary surveys. If you have any questions about it, reach out to me anytime. I might not always have an answer, but I'll try and help.